Okay, uh, so hello everyone. So my name is Shripet Sau and uh, I will be presenting my work on uh, factory digital twinning with model driven engineering methodology. So my focus for this uh, particular talk will be on a very specific aspect of the factory digital twinning, uh, which uh, I'll tell you more about it. So, so last year while I was working on a factory digital twin for uh, as a part of my dissertation project, I modeled a small section of a large factory for our industrial partner. So this section basically included uh, uh, included some conveyor belts and a large robotic arms and I used Azure digital twin for the project. So uh, during this process, I realized that while we could model machinery, gather process data from sensors and understand the workflow, we lacked in-depth information about the products themselves. So as we know, the purpose of a, a, a factory digital twin is to provide a complete picture of our entire manufacturing cycle, but without uh, without having the knowledge of the product uh, that is in uh, the manufacturing. So this uh, like the purpose of the digital twin is kind of incomplete. So. Uh, so now in this project, we explore how we can integrate digital thread in a digital twin that contains all the necessary information of the product. So uh, let's take for an example, uh, a toy car. Uh, in this case, uh, I've cheated and used a turtle bot. So let's take an example. Uh, let's say we are manufacturing this uh, small toy. So we can dissect this particular toy into its individual components, which is the Hard, uh, the outer casing, the hardware, uh, the electronic components involved, and the software uh, used for this particular uh, toy. So now uh, these components are interdependent on each other. So, for example, if we change uh, some, uh, if we change some uh, sensors or some a little bit uh, or some dimension in the CAD designs, so it affects your uh, Gerber files or the electronic components as well, and which might in turn affect the software component. So all the three components are uh, basically interlinked with each uh, with each other. So the role of digital thread is to connect these individual pieces of information, uh, providing a in-depth view of the product. So, uh, uh, so yeah, so our goal is to integrate all this product information into digital twin uh, using digital thread. And we aim to achieve this by extending the current DTDL language. So uh, as you all know, like uh, so DTDL is used to model the digital twins and it is known for its flexibility and the ease of uh, uh, ease of use. So uh, it models the components relationships and behavior through various classes. However, uh, while DTDL is uh, useful for structuring the digital twins, uh, it lacks the capability to store the detail uh, 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 to store the detailed product information. So by defining a new class, what we can do is we can include the product information in this uh, new class and uh, and hence integrate the concept of digital thread inside uh, digital twin using DTDL. So, uh, for example, consider uh, we have a digital twin of a, a toy manufacturing um, uh, unit. So, uh, so uh, this is like one of the example. So, the workstation is the central station, which comprises of three different entities or components, which are CAD designer, PCB designer, and software. Uh, your uh, software designer. So, and each and every. Uh, each and every entity or these components are responsible for uh, are, are responsible for their specific thing. They are although not uh, dependent on each other in terms of processes, but they are interlinked together uh, with uh, in res with, with respect of the product that they are building. So, like these entities are interconnected using the uh, digital thread. So, so now uh, like. There are multiple ways in which uh, we can approach this integration problem. So one method is to create classes for each file type. So let's say uh, in our DTDL, uh, in our DTDL language itself, we can define uh, classes for Gerber, uh, Gerber files, for CAD, for CAD files, and for C++ files. So uh, we can define uh, individual schema for uh, them and uh, just create, uh, just like map out each and every properties of. Uh, those classes inside DTTL, but the practicality of uh, implementing this is um, uh, it's it's very difficult. So uh, 
first of all, like there are so many uh, file types that are used in manufacturing. Creating class for each and every file type is a very tiresome process. And secondly, even if uh, even if we somehow have the manpower to uh, have uh, these classes, uh, mapping each and every small properties of these of these file types into DTDL is again something which is uh, not feasible. So the uh, another approach that we can uh, actually implement is we can define a class in DTDL for the file itself which would contain information on the relevant file components. So this class would be agnostic of the file type and would focus only on the name of uh, only on the objects and components which are relevant to this uh, particular uh, to, to, to the particular digital twin. So uh, let's go through. Uh, uh, let's go through an example to have a better understanding of it. So uh, let's say we have two different uh, uh, two different files that, uh, that is uh, a part of our uh, digital twin. Uh, one is a CAD file and one is uh, our uh, Gerber files, which is of uh, which is used for electronic components and PCB designing. So uh, yeah, so for uh, in CAD for uh, uh, one sec. Uh, okay. No, uh, sorry. Yeah. So, uh, CAD file for designing and uh, designing and structure, and Gerber file for electronics. So, we want to store all the relevant information of our digital twin and uh, define relation uh, uh, relevant information of our digital thread, in, uh, which includes these two files, and the, uh, define relationships between these components. So, let's say, uh, for example, we have a length. Uh, we have a edge of this particular uh, CAD files and this uh, the uh, the value of this edge uh, kind of affects the value of registers which are going to be uh, which are going to be placed uh, within uh, like below this particular uh, uh, structure so if we increase the length of uh, the edge the value of res registers will also change so there's a relationship between the length of the uh, uh, one component in cat files and one component in uh, in our Gerber files. So uh, what we can uh, what we can do is we uh, we can create a file parser uh, using Python or, or uh, any other language that would read out all the components present in in both the uh, both the files. Uh, and uh, and then uh, after listing out these components, we can define relationships uh, between uh, between the components that we want to have a relationship and uh, use our file object class to store all this information. So uh, let's have a working. Uh, let's see how let's have a working example. Yeah, so first uh, so this is uh, so basically this is a uh, small uh, POC uh, uh, I created using Python to just show how we can define relationships and how, the, how we can store that in our file object class. So first we select all the uh, uh, first, we select the digital twin uh, model. So, uh, so now we have the digital twin model, and we have. So, it is the same example that uh, I showed earlier, where we have one workstation, and we have three different entities. So, uh, now let's say uh, I want to uh, upload a CAD uh, CAD file to my uh, CAD parser node. So uh, click on an object. Uh, let's upload the CAD design. And uh, I do the same with uh, the Gerber files. So, so now, uh, so now since uh, both the file objects are already uh, loaded inside my digital twin, I, I want to list down all the components in uh, both the files and then create a relationship uh, between them. So I select one from the. Yeah, uh, sorry about having all the technical names into this. Uh, but yeah, I select one component from my CAD file and I do the same for with my Gerber file. And then I'd select the type of relationship between uh, between them, uh, which uh, will come to in a second.
So I defined like what can be the uh, relationships uh, between them. Uh, so this de uh, defining the relationship between them is something that uh, I still need to explore on. Yeah, so uh, so basically this uh, writes down the relationship between uh, this saves the relationship between the components that we have uh, just selected and uh, writes it down to our uh, file object class. Yeah, so uh, coming to the different different types of relationship, so. Uh, these are uh, so this is like first uh, I would say first tab on what kind of relationships can that that can exist between all the file components. So uh, taking the example of our, uh, our toy car, so we have the toy cat design, and uh, we also have the electronic uh, Gerber file for uh, for the same toy. So now uh, let's say we need to have a ultrasonic sensor, which uh, we can see the DT uh, this thing. Uh, so uh, we uh, yeah we have an ultrasonic sensor and we now need to establish a uh, dependency relationship wherein this ultrasonic sensor can only uh, work if we have uh, one capacitor one capacitor and two resistors in our electronic uh, in our electronic design so we create a, a dependency relationship between capacitor and these three components saying that until and unless these three components are not present uh, this uh, the ultrasonic sensor won't uh, like it would tell us that since the the dependencies are not met, so it would not uh, it would give us an error basically. And uh, similarly, let's say we want to have uh, we want to add a strip of LEDs on the front of uh, the toy car, and the length of LEDs would determine what kind of resistor do we need to use in our electronic component. So, uh, so now the value of uh, the value of the strip, or basically the length of the front of the car, car directly affects the value of re resistor R three. So that kind of becomes a uh, synchronization relation, wherein uh, one value affects the value of uh, another component. Now we can have uh, spatial relationships, uh, wherein uh, the location of the ultrasonic sensor would always be above the location of the LED strips. So uh, we can define the relationships uh, saying that uh, this is uh, this is the condition that needs to be met. And in the same way, compatibility as in so uh, are the sensor that we want to use, they have a specific requirement as in only these kind of uh, electronic components can be used. So we can define a compatibility uh, compatibility uh, relation uh, between um, those two components. OK, so what are the advantages uh, of uh, using uh, the second approach of digital thread? One major advantage would be uh, since these are file agnostic, uh, these can be used in uh, different different domains as as long as we can create a file parser for them. So we can have it in healthcare. Uh, we can just uh, so these can be useful for uh, reading all the Excel files, the ECG, uh, ECG graphs and everything. As long as we create a file parser for that thing, they can uh, uh, we can use a file object class to actually define the digital thread. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Any questions? Thank you very much for this presentation. Let's thank the speaker.